there's a major difference uh, between the mindset that I had of you mm. holding me hostage or taking it out on me versus you going through a healing process that you really needed to go through. Right. And here I thought you were going to talk about parenting. Wow. <laughs> you went straight to sex. Here we go. <laughs> Woo. Okay. Right. Thank you well, for hope- answering. Welcome to the Blended Family Coaching Show, where you'll discover how to move your step family from just surviving to truly thriving. Grab your headphones and listen in as we share practical, real-life strategies for building healthy bonds. Understanding the kids' perspective. Romance and partnership. Parenting with great teamwork. And yes, even co-parenting with a difficult ex. We're Mike and Kim Anderson, and we believe with the right tools, every step couple can overcome the common challenges of step family life. Join us for authentic and sometimes comical conversations to discover how you can lead your family with confidence and create the future you really want. Well, hey, everyone. Thank you so much for (laughs) joining us for this very special episode. Can you believe it, honey? 100 episodes. This is episode number 100. It's unbelievable. I know. But awesome too. It is very <laughs> cool. To match the 100 episodes, we have a little over 100 ratings yeah, and reviews that's now. That's kind of neat. And that's kind of cool. Uh-huh. We would love for you, if you're listening, to share with, uh, with us what you think. Mm-hmm. Give us a little bit of feedback. Hit a star rating on the platform that you're listening on if that uh, is allowed. Or leave us a review. We would love to hear any of that. Or... You could also take one of your favorite episodes Mm -hmm. and share it out on your favorite social media platform and tell people why it's important to you. We would love you to help us to kind of just gain more traction and get Mm -hmm. more people to be aware of this resource. So anyway, here we are with episode number 100. Yeah, And another thought around that is if you've been listening and we haven't covered something that you really want us to talk about. Yep. Where do they go, honey? They go to mikeandkimcoaching.com <laughs> forward slash share. Yes. And you can submit a suggestion or a request uh, and just ask us to talk about something that would help you on the show. Yes. We read every single one and we would love to be able to cover whatever it is you need. Right. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So thank you so much for joining us and, and celebrating this milestone with us of a hundred episodes. And we thought, what do we want to do for the hundredth yeah. episode? <laughs> right. We wanted to bring some value as we always do, mm-hmm. but we also thought it might be fun to take a little bit of time to just interview each other and maybe ask some reflective questions about our own blended family journey mm-hmm. over the past 20 years. Right. And, and maybe a few direct questions about our marriage Uh-oh. and <laughs> even some dreamy questions about what might come or what our family's future could look like. Yeah. And and we want you to know that we have not rehearsed this at all. <laughs> uh, so we're taking kind of a, a chance here. We really have no idea what questions are going to come out of each other's mouths. We've prepared individually, but we haven't shared with each other what we're going to ask. And so we've got a few probing questions. Some of our responses might be a bit off the cuff. Uh, I don't know how much is going to get edited (laughs) out of this, but we'll see how it goes. But again, our hope is that this conversation is just going to bring you some value as you ponder your own questions, your own story uh, to some of the topics that we'll talk about today with each other. It's yep. a little scary. <laughs> We're unrehearsed and mm-hmm. I'm feeling a little bit unprepared in this moment. If I'm <laughs> You're completely honest, yeah. um, I've prepared some questions to ask you, honey, but I honestly don't know that I'm ready to answer your <laughs> questions. You know, I'm a bit of a slow processor, but I'm ready to dive in and give it a go. Awesome. And you know, first we want to talk about the last 20 years mm. or so. And that, or so. Or so. Because we're over 20 years now, right? Yeah, only by a couple months. Yeah. Well, if you add in the <laughs> dating time and the friendship time, we're definitely over Still it. Still only yeah. a couple months. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, one thing we've realized over the past 20 years is that hindsight is a great thing. Mm. And when I think about our most difficult seasons, mm. there were so many issues we struggled with throughout mm. our journey 
And at times we thought we'd never make it through to the other side of those issues. For sure. But now that time has given us the benefit of hindsight, Mm -hmm. it's really interesting to kind of compare those ideas or perspectives that we had back when we were feeling stuck and we were experiencing Mm -hmm. so much pain Mm -hmm. to how we view those difficult seasons of life now to Mm kind of compare those two perspectives of where we were then to how we feel about it at this point in time, now that we're on the other side and we have some hindsight. Sure. Okay. So I'm wondering if I can start with a question for you (laughs) around all of that. Here we go. It's about to get real. Yeah. Well, and I know it's okay to ask this question because (laughs) we're all about being real, right? (laughs) So I don't think you're going to mind, but it is a bit probing. Okay. Let's hear it. (laughs) All right. So honey, if you had to pick one painful issue or a really difficult season that we faced in our journey as a blended family, which one would you say that you personally were the most misguided in your mindset or your approach? Where was it that you personally made the most easy wrong turns in our journey? And after you answer that, I'd love to know where you believe I was most misguided and where I made the most easy wrong turns, because what I'm really wondering is if they're the same issues, right? Mm. Or if you've got two different answers around where you were most misguided and where I was most misguided. Um, I hope that makes sense. It's a really, it's a really long <laughs> it's question. It's a long question. <laughs> but what was a painful issue? or difficult season where you were just really off. Now, looking back with the benefit of hindsight. Well, it's funny that you say you hope it's okay to ask that question, (laughs) and it's probing because my answer might be a little bit revealing for you as well. That's okay. I think we've had some extended seasons where we have not clicked in our physical intimacy, Mm. and we've really struggled. And I've had stories in my head about that reality for you. Mm -hmm. And I think some of the the things that I thought about you or about what your motivations were, were probably some of the most misguided stories I've ever had about you. Oh, wow. Well, that's very surprising for me. (laughs) You weren't expecting that? (laughs) No, that's not what I thought you were going to say. Well, I, I think, you know, without getting into great detail, you've been mistreated. Mm-hmm. physically in the past in the past yep and that has created some struggles for you mm-hmm. and which in turn has created struggles for us definitely and when we've had trouble in the area of sex mm-hmm. i have um blamed it on you a lot mm. and instead of being empathetic and trying to be understanding and trying to seek out um, what was going on underneath the surface, I often stayed very selfish and self-focused mm. and had stories in my head about what you believed about me. Yeah. Uh, and that was really misguided. We've done a lot of healing around that, mm-hmm. and a lot of work around that. Yeah. Um, we don't talk about it a ton, but it's an area where I think uh, I've, I've maybe done just as much work as you have <laughs> you, simply because I had to get my head on right. Yeah. 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 I remember a time when you said to me, I feel like I'm the one who's paying for all those jerks of your past. (laughs) It's getting taken out on me. And in reality, that was true. Yeah. In some ways that was very true. I had to deal with the fallout, You did, but it wasn't getting taken out on me. Yeah. And I think that there's a major difference uh, between the mindset that I had of you Mm. holding me hostage or taking it out on me versus you going through a healing process that you really needed to go through. Right. Wow. And here I thought you were going to talk about parenting. Wow. (laughs) You went straight to sex. Here we go. (laughs) Ooh. Okay. Thank you for answering. Is that okay? Or do we need to go back and do a different answer? (laughs) Well, did you have anything for the second part of that question of where you feel I was most misguided? Mm, That's a good question. Um, I, I would say, you know, you've, shared this in lots of different ways. Um, and I think it's actually come out uh, in a lot of different concepts that we talk about, but you talk a lot about how you don't see me as controlling anymore Mm, because 
I'm, I'm very organized. There's certain pieces about my personality, the way I think, the way I do things. I've been in leadership in so many areas of my mm-hmm. life and that creates a certain structure in my mindset. And when that came out to you, you've often seen me as controlling. And I don't know that at the heart of it that I've ever, ever really wanted to control you. Yeah. Um, so I think maybe that might be part of it. I would totally agree with that. I remember reading a book called Control Freak, just because Mm. I believed you were a control freak. And I was really struggling with that. And, you know, of course, part of that has to do with my past, because I had been controlled in the past. And so I have definitely have some heightened perceptions around that. Mm. So did the book prove me not to be controlling? I I didn't make it through the whole book. Uh. (laughs) I got really frustrated. But, you know, over the years, I have come to understand that, oh, wait a minute, this is just how he perceives life and how he does life. And he's Mm. not really trying to control me. Mm. He's trying to organize things in a way that makes sense to him. Mm. And it's okay that we do things differently. Okay. But yeah, I would definitely agree that I was pretty misguided for many, yeah. many years around your motives. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. Wow. All right. So that should was, we keep going? That was interesting. Yeah. Why okay. don't you ask me a question? Okay. It's funny that we didn't talk about the questions we're going to ask because this might be too similar of a question that we might have to, we might have to change it. But my first question in this area of the last 20 years is that we often talk about the stories in our head that we tend to develop about each other, Mm -hmm. which is kind of what you were just talking about. Sure. What might be the story that you've told yourself about me in the past that has most radically changed at this point in our marriage? Mm -hmm. One of the stories in my head about you, honey, was that you perceived me in ways that were not good enough, that there were times when you would make requests or ask to change things or want to grow Mm. in our relationship. And I would jump to conclusions and stories that, oh, he wants to change things because he thinks um, there's something wrong with me. Mm. I failed. I'm defective. Mm. I'm inadequate. And I would jump to that story and then kind of attack you. (laughs) Yeah, I remember a couple of those. Get very (laughs) defensive or shut down, you know, all my usual coping skills back then. But that was definitely a story that has dramatically changed. And, you know, part of it is because you've learned how to approach me in more effective ways. But a bigger part of that is that I took the time and energy to go back and examine those stories Mm. and really look at the truth about me, Mm. which is a lot of that's rooted in my childhood. And just, you tend to just trip over the tripwire and here we go. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. yeah. So if I hear that right, you um, would take a request for a change as an attack on you, on your character, Yeah, that you weren't good enough. Yeah, and I would kind of take it to that extreme of, oh, he thinks I'm a horrible wife. He thinks I'm an awful mom. Oh, Mm. Um, because I tend to to gravitate towards the status quo, whereas you tend to, hey, let's improve. Right. (laughs) (laughs) And so your attempts to improve and kind of push us forward and out of the status quo or out of the stuck mode we were in. Yep would rub me the wrong way. Mm. Now, in hindsight, I'm so grateful that Mm. you did that because uh, we probably wouldn't be here today still married if you hadn't, honestly. Maybe so. so. (laughs) But it did create stories for me. Yeah. So a follow-up question to that. If you were able to take like a time machine, get in the DeLorean Mm -hmm. and head head (laughs) back 20 years and connect that new view you have of me now with who you were then, what would have changed? What have you, what would you have done differently? Remain calm. Oh. <laughs> okay. Stayed curious. Yeah. Listen before I reacted. Mm. Um, stay secure. I mm. was very insecure with who mm. I was and that would get triggered really easily. Yeah. And um, I really wasn't listening to you. I would immediately 
feel these painful emotions and react. And, you know, then I didn't even have a chance to hear what you were saying or why you were saying it because your motive underneath those changes that you wanted to make Mm -hmm. were for the good of our family and our marriage. Always. I know that now. Mm -hmm. I wish I had known that back then. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, that's good. I've got another question for you in this area of the last 20 years. Okay. Go for it. From your perspective, Mm -hmm. was the work that it's taken us to get to this point bigger and harder than you imagined when we first started seeking real healing? Or was it not quite as bad as you imagined it to be? We're so excited to let you know about something brand new we've created just for you. We've realized that with so many episodes available here on the show, it might feel a bit overwhelming to find the topics that matter most to you. That's why we've created a simple tool for you to receive a personalized playlist focused on your current struggle or your biggest challenge. That's right. It's called the Blended Family Breakthrough Quiz. You'll answer just a few questions, and based on your responses, we'll email you a curated custom playlist of episodes that are specific to you. This simple quiz will direct you to the most impactful episodes that pertain to you personally and keep you on track in your journey of discovery, learning, and growth. So scroll all the way to the bottom of the show notes for this episode and click the link to take the Blended Family Breakthrough Quiz today. Okay, let's get back to the discussion. Ooh, well, back then I imagined it to be impossible. Mm, That's a big word. Yeah, because of the pain. Yeah. Because I was so immersed in my pain and my confusion and my misunderstandings that it just seemed like this is never going to work out. I remember feeling that way. Yeah. Yeah. And I guess impossible is a strong word, but that's That's what it felt like. Yeah. (laughs) Like this is never going to be able to get resolved. Yep. But of course, now when I look back at that, I'm like, it really wasn't that big of a deal. <laughs> yeah. You know, if yeah. just keep taking one step after the other, mm. it all starts to come together and make sense. And mm. skills are easy to learn. If you apply yeah. yourself, yeah. you can learn new skills. But, you know, there were times when I just didn't have the emotional energy mm. and the motivation to learn new skills. Right. And I think that's another reason why it just felt overwhelming. Mm. Like, oh, God. How can I possibly learn a new way to parent or communicate yeah. with you? Yeah. But once I just started doing it and staying, you know, committed to doing it, mm-hmm. you get to a point where you're like, hey, I've actually yeah. kind of mastered these skills or I'm a lot better than I was. Sure. And it's making a difference when you start to see the impact yep. and the progress. But yeah, impossible is the word I would say mm-hmm. at one point mm-hmm. how I felt. So it sounds to me like the actual work was a little smaller than what you imagined that it was going to be when we started out. Definitely. Yeah. I felt the same way and I can totally relate to that word impossible. And you know, what's funny is I don't, I'm guessing that's not unique to us. I think most couples that are feeling stuck, genuinely stuck, Mm -hmm. probably look at the work as a mountain to climb. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, for whatever reason, once you get halfway up the mountain, the perspective changes and you're like, oh, this is much more of a hill than a mountain. Yeah. (laughs) Once you start to see the summit and you're actually within reach, it's like, wait a minute. Yeah. 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 And once you start to master the painful emotions. Right. You know, it's really the painful emotions that make it feel so big and looming. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, that's a good Good question, honey. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Thinking of the full preponderance Mm -hmm. of the last 20 years and knowing what you know now, Mm -hmm. if you could go back in time and catch me at a point where I could genuinely listen to you, what would you have wanted to tell me? Hmm. Well, that's a great question. I would have loved to go back to when we first started out and we're parenting Mm. Annika. Mm. So before Phoebe and Jacob came along. Yeah. Okay. 
and tell you butt out. <laughs> no, oh wait, you did tell me that. <laughs> Sorry, what would you have told me? I would have told you that it's much more complicated than you think. Mm. You felt I was trying to just oversimplify it all. Right. It mm. was, you know, all you have to do is step in and discipline. All you have to do is a set a consequence. All mm. you, But you didn't understand all of the emotional attachments. Right. You know, all that we had been through, Annika and I, mm -hmm. the guilt, mm -hmm. the fear. Mm -hmm. You just, you really didn't have any understanding of all of that. Yeah. And it was much bigger than you ever could have imagined at that point. And, right. you know, now you're a parent yep. and you get that sure. emotional sure. pull of your children and that heart string, that heart connection you mm -hmm. have with your biological kids and the history and mm. all of it. Um, but back then, it, you know, there was just no way for you to have that, that, yeah, context. that context. Yeah. Yeah. I think it really did change things for me when Phoebe and Jacob came along, mm -hmm. just from a, from a vision standpoint, just a, an experiential standpoint, but also over the years, as I got to know Annika more and mm -hmm. I learned yeah. more about her story and the challenges that had preceded me. Yeah. And then some of the challenges we ran into from a parenting yeah. perspective and dealing with your ex and all that. That really grew a lot of my understanding of, mm -hmm. oh, this is what we're dealing with. Yeah. You started um, to have more empathy yeah, for sure. Yeah. 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 I think that would have been good advice. And notice in my question, if you could catch me at a point where I could genuinely listen. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a little bit of a admission in that question yeah. that I know I had a lot of points along yeah. the way where I was not listening. Yeah. Yeah. What about you? I throw the same question back to you. <laughs> oh, if, if I could go back and tell you something, yeah, I think maybe what, it, what could have been most impactful is related to the answer you gave a little while ago mm -hmm. about feeling as though you weren't enough, mm. um, somehow communicating you're enough, just as simple as that. Yeah. I think that could have radically changed a number of seasons for us yeah. <laughs> um, when when you were stuck in yeah. shame and guilt and yeah. some of that stuff. I know. think you tried to. I think you tried really hard to convey that to me. But yeah, I just wasn't in a place to receive it. Yeah. So maybe Sadly, that wouldn't have worked. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's much better now. Yes. And I'm grateful. Yes, you know. me too. Yeah. All right. Cool. So that's kind of the, the first overarching subject. We, we crafted some questions. Yeah. And that's been fun, right? To it reflect is. back on our mistakes. Yeah, of course. <laughs> well, why not? That's what we're here to do, right? Yeah. We, a couple episodes back, we talked about vulnerability and yeah, we're just uh, being vulnerable, yeah. right? And, and it is fun to kind of look back and think through, wow, we, we really messed that up. <laughs> but it's good because it reminds me of all the intentional work that we've done to really stay the course, right. even when it was hard. And I'm so grateful that we yes. did get through those tough seasons and we me didn't too. throw in the towel. I know that there were times where both of us were ready yeah. to throw in the towel. Yeah, I'm grateful as well. Yeah. So thinking about that. Let's talk about our marriage, mm -hmm. okay? Because over the past 20 years, we've had to really fight for our marriage. Mm -hmm. And even though we were pretty aware before we got married that sure. this wasn't going to be that easy, you know, blended family life is just different than first family life. And that means blended family marriage is different than first family marriage. And I, I think there were times when we were both thinking... Good grief. I did not sign up for this. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah. So I I'm wondering if I can ask a question about our marriage. Of course. So we're about 10 years out from that season where we were ready to call it quits. Right. What is it about our marriage now that makes you feel safe and secure? Hmm. Well, I think part of that really developed by getting through tough stuff together. Hmm. You know, every time we hit that mountain or that big problem or that huge issue, um, and we hung in there and we worked through it, even though it was so painful and so difficult and so hmm. many ups and downs, when we did come out the other side, 
that gave me confidence mm. and security and mm. safety that, you know, he is in this with me. Mm. He does believe in this marriage and we can do this. Yeah. Um, I, we gain a little bit more and a little bit more every mm. time we kind of came through things mm. together. Mm. I think that really helps me to feel secure and safe at this point. Okay. Cause I kind of feel like, well, whatever comes, oh, we can get through it. Yeah. So I guess that season, I mean, we've talked about it a lot. We've talked about the camping story mm -hmm. and anybody who's been listening to the podcast <laughs> for a while knows a lot of our stories that season 10 years ago where we were really on the edge Yeah. when the clouds began to lift from that season, would you say that was like supercharging kind of? It was because, you know, I think I can share this because you've shared this before, but during that season, you were really struggling with an anger problem. Oh yeah. Big and time. part of that was fueled by being that stuck outsider. That was just mm -hmm. so difficult for you. And, mm -hmm. but you did lash out in anger. Yeah, I did. And I mean, I consider it miraculous that you were able to overcome that, mm -hmm. that you actually had a change of heart and a shift mm -hmm. in your behavior and you worked hard. This wasn't yeah. easy. You went to counseling, yeah. you worked hard yeah. to overcome that and deal with anger in healthy ways. And when we came out of that tough season that you're talking about 10 yeah. years in, that was a big piece of it sure. was you learning to deal with anger mm. in a way that was helpful and that mm. kept us connected. Mm. And that was huge for me of, wow, he's willing to do the work to mm. change. That stands out in my mind okay. of like one of the miracles of our marriage yeah. was that you were willing to do something new and yeah. I mean, I can't even remember the last time you had an angry outburst. It's yeah. not even in my memory Yeah, because you've worked so hard at changing that. Yeah, that's well, thanks for sharing that. Mm -hmm. I, I wonder, this is kind of a, a tag along on that same question. What is it that if you could maybe put some words around, what makes you feel like you're a valued partner in our marriage now? So you're feeling safe and secure because we've been through some stuff together and you've seen that I'm willing to put work in, mm -hmm. but also what makes you feel like a valued partner? That's a, that's a funny question <laughs> because I know for a long time you didn't feel that I partnered with you. I think what makes me feel valued now is the fact that I realized you really wanted partnership when you were going about it in a way that seemed controlling to me. Well, there were probably times where I, <laughs> I tried to demand yes. partnership. And anger <laughs> certainly conveys control. Sure, yeah. So I think once you got past that point where you were trying to control with anger and you were just, you were really frustrated is what you were. Mm -hmm. When you finally started figuring out a way to handle that when we had conflict and then you were able to approach me in different ways. So mm -hmm. from a inviting me in mm -hmm. rather than you know, telling me mm. and asking for permission to share things. Mm. And just you, you had some really great strategies of how to approach me and invite mm. me into a partnership with you. And that's what made me feel valued mm. was mm -hmm. he really wants to hear. He's really curious about my perspective on this. Mm. He really wants me to weigh in on this decision. He doesn't want to just tell me what the decision should be right when you started shifting your approach mm. that increased how I felt as far as being valued by you. Yeah, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. I, I think that this is kind of an important topic to talk about because partnership feeling genuine partnership and a blended family marriage is hard. It is <laughs> often we feel like opponents rather than partners. Yeah. So. And I think a lot of that just came from learning step family dynamics and learning yeah. strategies and how to work as a team and yeah. all the things that we teach couples to do or yep. stuff that we learned along the way that built yep. our partnership and really solidified it. Yeah, and, totally. And so, yeah, it does make both people feel valued when you're able to do that for sure. Awesome. Yeah. Okay, what question do you have for me about our marriage? 
So when I think back to the beginning, I think you were a lot more aware of the possible challenges that we were going to face only because you grew up in step family dynamics. Right. Yeah. Mm. You understood some things around how step relationships and dysfunctional marriages can play out in these dynamics because sure, yeah. you had seen that play out. So my question is, in our dynamics, I know you experienced a lot of pain and confusion when you did experience being that stranded stranger, yeah. right? Where you were kind of stuck on the outside of mm -hmm. my biological bond with Annika. And that was a mm -hmm. tough reality for you. Mm -hmm. So when you experienced that stranded stranger position, what were the stories in your head about me and specifically about our marriage? And you can be honest here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can take it. Well, I hope so. I mean, that's what we're trying to do here, right? <laughs> but what, what were the story? What were you telling yourself about me when you were stuck on the outside? Mm. Well, I, I think in its simplest form, the the story that I had in my head is that I'm being used and you really didn't care about me. Mm. That um, I was convenient because even through some of those seasons of anger and uh, my own dysfunction, I didn't necessarily neglect you or I never laid a hand on you. Mm -hmm. I, I said some awful things. Yes. But also I worked really hard for our family in a lot of different ways yeah. to provide and create security and uh, help everybody to feel like family members and a part of the family. I worked really hard to love yeah. Annika, even in the early years, even yeah. though I didn't do it perfectly. And so I think the story in my head was you wanted all this stuff I provided, but you didn't want me. Mm. Yeah. So the second part to this question yeah. is how were you able to stay committed to our marriage? And how did you choose to love me? even when you had those awful stories in your head about me? Mm. Well, I think, you know, like I said, that, that there were times where I thought that. So mm -hmm. it wasn't like, I don't think it was this constant pervasive um, message that just was over and over and over permanently for, for so years. So it wasn't 24-7. No, it wasn't 24-7. And so I think there were some little bright, moments, even in some of our challenging seasons, sure, we had some little bright moments. Um, and so that helped me because mm. there was like, I don't know, I guess it was, it was maybe like, you know, there'd be a, a few days or a few weeks where it's like, Oh, she did, you know, she doesn't care about me really. She's just using me because mm -hmm. I make a decent living and I provide and you know, that kind of thing. But then there were, you know, a day or two where you would do something or say something mm -hmm. that would provide evidence to the contrary. And then that would make me feel good, but also be confusing. Like, <laughs> oh, okay. Well maybe I'm wrong and I don't like to be wrong. So <laughs> I had to kind of face some of that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's so easy to assume someone else's motive. Mm -hmm. And there were times where I assumed your motive was simply to use me for what I provided and not to partner with me and really be, my wife. Yeah. Cause you were feeling yeah. so stuck on the outside uh, of the absolutely. family, which yeah. is such a painful place to be. And I, and I think what's funny this, it's, it's almost sounds stupid to say that, well, maybe not stupid, but <laughs> I am such an affection person. You are. I need words of affirmation and I need physical affection. Right. I need you to hold my hand. I need you to put your arm around me. I, I still need that. Mm -hmm. Right. And that was so easy for you to do with Annika. Yeah, that's true. It came so easy. It just was mm -hmm. natural. And, and I mean, it should be for a mother to be able yeah. to do that. But in our dynamics mm -hmm. and in the blended family and me watching you do that just effortlessly with Annika, but then to hear, well, I, that doesn't come naturally to me and you and feeling yeah. like you weren't putting effort into that, mm -hmm. that just reinforced the story. Well, she really doesn't care about me yeah. or want me because look, it's not that hard for her to do with Annika. So why is it so difficult with me? Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, I have to own my part in that was that I wasn't making the efforts that mm -hmm. I could have been making to, to fill those needs sure. in you. Yeah for whatever reason, either I wasn't aware or I, uh, 
I don't know why, honestly. Yeah. Sometimes it was because of all of the uh, strife going on between us. Absolutely. I mean, mm-hmm. when you look back on it, we were just talking about safety and security, right? Yeah. You were safe and secure with Annika. Yeah. Uh, not with me in those seasons. That's true. Yeah. yeah. And so it's not... Uh, it's not that surprise. It's not that big of a mm-hmm. leap when you sit back and really look at the story and go, oh, well, no wonder there was a barrier yeah. there. Um, but, but yeah, that would I be think painful. that was hard for me. Yeah, to see me doling that out freely and easily mm-hmm. to, to yep. her, but then withholding it from you. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Whew, all right. Those are, <laughs> those are some tough things you yeah. know, that we've had to live through. So let's shift gears a little bit and go mm-hmm. on the lighter side. What's the most romantic thing you remember over the last 20 years? I don't know if I want to share that. (laughs) Oh, is that right? (laughs) Wow. Well, you can always edit it out if it's a little too racy. (laughs) A few anniversaries ago, can't remember. And yeah, you're laughing because you know. (laughs) That's probably the most romantic one I can remember too. Really? Yeah. (laughs) So, which anniversary was that? I don't know. It was a couple years ago. We had just started our business and finances were tight, right? We had slashed the budget. So we had agreed that for our anniversary, we were just going to go to dinner. We were going to keep it simple and, and we were going to be, uh, what's the word? Frugal. Frugal. Yes. Which (laughs) is, is usually we do more for our anniversary, but this year we had agreed. And so we went to dinner, right? Sure. And then at some point, I can't remember exactly when it happened but we started talking about hmm what would it be like to uh go to a hotel and just oh we had to be home that night too we couldn't yeah, spend the night because the, the night kids were overnight. expecting us home right. we hadn't made arrangements of course yep. so what would it look like to just book a hotel to have a little romantic uh liaison <laughs> <laughs> a liaison huh <laughs> yep and we went back and forth, back and forth of should we spend the money and we call different places and yeah. we wanted it to be special. We didn't want yeah. to just go to like a, you know, Motel 6. That wasn't the deal. That we wasn't wanted, what we were after. No, we wanted to go somewhere. Nice. Nice. And um, so we looked for coupons. We looked for, I mean, yeah. we spent probably an hour in the car <laughs> struggling with this decision. Do we just go yeah. home or do we... Yep. Do we do this little yeah. outing that we really wanted? And we ended up. Wouldn't you know it? We found a really inexpensive room at the same hotel we stayed in on our wedding night. Yes, which was really meaningful because yeah. it's a pretty fabulous and, place. <laughs> and technically, we did stay the night because I think we left after midnight. Yeah. <laughs> and I remember after our romantic interlude. <laughs> We're trying to keep it clean here, people. Yeah. <laughs> The the other romantic part about it was we went downstairs into the restaurant and ordered two desserts and uh, shared yes. them. <laughs> yes, that was I'm fun. all about the dessert. Yes. So was nice. it was sexy and sweet. Oh, well, I like that. I'm going to remember that one. Sexy and sweet. And romantic. Very good. I hope that answers your question. It does. And it's so <laughs> funny that you mentioned that because I think I was thinking the same thing. Oh, that's yeah. awfully sweet. Yeah. That's good. So let's shift gears a bit and talk about the future. Mm -hmm. And this is something we like to dream about together. We enjoy exploring all kinds of ideas about what our future looks like, especially when we're empty nesters. Mm. Which is not too far away. Not too far for us. (laughs) But again, hindsight can put things into perspective. Mm. And when I think back to our wedding day, Mm. I have a very vivid picture of you, honey. Oh, yeah. You were looking so young and dashing, but you also had this definite look of uncertainty (laughs) on your face and maybe even fear. Yeah, I would say that might be accurate. (laughs) (laughs) I think you were probably wondering how all of this was actually going to work out. Mm, Yes, you're accurate that there was quite a bit of fear and worry. Yeah, and rightfully so. I mean, neither of us were really prepared to navigate through all the complexities of blended family life. Mm-hmm. I don't think anyone can be fully prepared. Yeah. But it's fun for me to compare that picture of you back on our wedding day to the man that you've become mm-hmm. and who you are today, 20 years so later. So much for young and dashing. Huh? <laughs> wow. <Well. laughs> That's not what I meant. <laughs> 
but there is a huge difference, right? You've acquired so much wisdom and confidence. Your heart has softened in all the right places and you've gained strength and conviction in all the right places too. Mm. And it's so amazing for me to think about that. And I'm so proud of who you've become. (laughs) (laughs) I then sometimes think about what you'll be like 10 or 15 or 20 years from now. Shriveled up. (laughs) (laughs) And that's a cool thought process for me to go there and try to picture that. Mm. And the reason is because you're all about personal growth and development. And so I think I have a pretty accurate picture of what you'll be like someday. Mm. But I can also admit that I'm not as intentional about my own personal growth and development, which you know, (laughs) at least not at an equally rapid pace that Uh, you are, right? I'll agree with that, yeah. And this is just one of the many areas where we tend to differ, right? Sure. So here's my question. Okay. When you picture me on our wedding day, so naive, so clueless about so many things, (laughs) (laughs) and then you compare that with who I've become over the last 20 years, and hopefully you can see that I've acquired some wisdom and strength and confidence as well. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So this is what I'm wondering. When you project into the future and imagine what I'll be like in 10 to 15 or 20 years from now, what do you envision? So who do you see me becoming as we grow old together? Hmm. That's a deep question. Yeah, it is. I tried to make some of these tough. That's good. (laughs) That's good. You know, what's funny is one of the first things that attracted me to you is what I perceived as some pretty tremendous strength Mm. because you had already been through a lot in life I before had. you and I even met each other. But then as we started to move along, what began to be revealed, and you just kind of shared some of this, is that underneath the overcoming came with a lot of insecurity. Mm. And that impacted you and it impacted us in our marriage. Yes, I'd agree with that. And so... What you've overcome a lot of in the last 20 years has been those insecurities. Yeah, the self-esteem. Exactly. So now not only are you a survivor, but now you're thriving. Mm. And I agree that maybe we don't have the same perspective around (laughs) um, self-improvement or growth or the intentionality or maybe the quantity of time Mm -hmm. that we put into that. But you're not afraid to dig in. And when you're prompted, and I believe for both of us, really, this is a real spiritual thing. Mm -hmm. Um, When you feel God saying, hey, Kim, you need to do this, Mm -hmm. you you really don't hesitate. Right. And and you keep going. And so I see you 20 years from now as an incredible source of wisdom for people who are living in a world who really needs wisdom. Mm. There's a lot of assumed knowledge out there, but you bring amazing wisdom and I get to watch it play out every time we're sitting with a couple Mm. and all of a sudden, like off the cuff, you say something to whatever it is that they're wrestling with Mm -hmm. that just (laughs) hits the nail on the head. (laughs) And to be witness to you who've been beat up in life Mm. and ended up in a place of overcoming but being insecure Mm -hmm. to now sitting securely with others who really need help along the way, Mm. um, that's been an incredible thing to witness. And I just just don't see that stopping. Mm. I think it's going to keep on going. So you see that just increasing over the years. Absolutely. I hope so. I, I have no doubt. Would you like to know the vision I see for you in 20 years from now? No, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I would love to hear that. Well, it's it's easy to answer. I see you becoming your mentors. Hmm. I see you slowly um, becoming more and more like these amazing men that have raised amazing families and have 
incredible marriages because of who they've chosen to be in character yeah. and how they've led their family. And I see you becoming them. Yeah, I appreciate that. <laughs> Do you believe that? <laughs> That's a good question. Um, some days, yes. Some <laughs> days, not so much. I think probably the best thing I've ever done, not just for our marriage, not just for our kids, but really just for myself, mm. is I was very selective of yeah. who those mentors would yes. be. Yes. And, uh, and that's been a long term, you know, two individuals yeah. who uh, have com really invested in my life. Yeah. It, but I was intentional about yeah. going out and saying, hey, guys, will you spend time with me? Yeah. And yeah. they're amazing men that we regard yeah. highly and have so much respect for and yeah. admiration for. And you yep. picked well. Yeah. And their influence on your life and impact on your life has just been an amazing benefit Absolutely. for our family. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Thank you for sharing that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Woo. <laughs> <laughs> Getting a little emotional in here. I I'm curious how you'll answer this question. If you could wish for only one thing for our future, what might that be? Well, that's a tough one. I think we've had glimpses of this, but I think I wish for kind of to all the time be really comfortable with each other. Like we've come so far, but there are still times when we are walking on eggshells a little bit. Yeah. Or kind of maybe avoiding each other or maybe avoiding topics. I mean, it doesn't go on for long like it used to. Right. But, you know, or little times when we're, you know, annoyed or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. And maybe this is unrealistic to wish for this, but you <laughs> use the word wish. So Yeah, sure. I mean, it would be great if all the time we were at this place of just feeling comfortable with each other. Mm. Even if one of us is having a bad day or in a bad mood or something goes wrong or there's a big disappointment, if you and I are still able to just remain together yeah. and peaceful and calm and connected yeah. all the time yeah. and, you know, and not have kind of the hangups and the stressors around our physical relationship that still tend to come up. I mean, they've sure. gotten better, yeah. you know, and I've healed a lot. Yeah. But I would love to have even more intimacy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A deeper degree of intimacy yeah. someday. I think we're headed there. Yeah, yeah, I do too. Yeah, I think that that might be really possible. I mean, we keep heading there mm -hmm. and we're, we're learning and growing. We haven't stopped learning. Yeah. Um, and so I think we're, we're definitely on the right trajectory. Yeah, it seems like yeah. we're spending more and more time in that place. Yeah. So I wonder if the answer would be different on this question. What are you most excited about for our future? Ooh, I'm excited about the unknown. Oh, yes. That's <laughs> not surprising, actually. I should have known yeah. the answer to that question. You know, I'm all about <laughs> surprises and spontaneity. Yes. And, and uh, I like not having it planned out, actually. Yeah. Well, hopefully, from my perspective, we'll work the plan, actually. Yes. <laughs> well, life is full of possibilities, <laughs> yes. so we just never know. Yeah. But I... I'm excited about the possibilities ahead. I think what I'm most excited about is, mm -hmm. you know, we've been through stuff. We've learned a lot. Not only mm -hmm. have we learned a lot in our own story, but we've done a ton of reading and research and we're going to continue to do that. We've gotten the opportunity to connect with other people who are doing similar work to us. And I just totally envision the rest of our lives helping people together as partners like that, how could life get much better yeah. than that? I just think that's super cool. Yeah. Yeah. So, we're enjoying that now and I yeah. just can't see that ever changing. Absolutely. Well, you know what? This was really fun and it's mm -hmm. so great for us to get to celebrate our hundredth episode with you, our listeners. Yes. I think maybe we learned a few things about each other and you guys probably learned mm -hmm. some things about us that uh, we didn't even know about each other. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and that always keeps things interesting, yes. doesn't it? But we really hope that this impromptu conversation has just encouraged you sure. and maybe even given you a little bit of renewed hope and some fresh energy in your blended family journey. Yeah. You know, 
we've been through some really challenging seasons. We have. Yeah. And if you're feeling stuck, we get it. We've been there. And we're always the first to admit that we've made some easy wrong turns sure. in our blended family journey. And we really haven't experienced any perfect seasons where everything <laughs> played out the way we wanted or expected. That's very true. There have been a lot of challenging bumps in the road and we mm. each got bruised and hurt along the way. Yep. And that's why we like to say that our goal and your goal mm really needs to be focused on imperfect progress. Yes, That's what the last sure. 20 years have been about. That's right. So choose to forgive each other and give each other grace. Mm -hmm. That was absolutely necessary for us to continue pushing past the pain yep. and for us to keep moving forward. Right, honey? Sure. Of course. We realized how imperfect we are as people, as spouses, as parents, mm. and we each had to choose to let go of the expectation yep. that we should have it all together and get it right every time. For sure. <laughs> that's an unrealistic expectation. Yep. None of us are perfect. Yeah, that's for sure. And, and again, we just want to thank you, mm -hmm. our listeners, and let you know that you're not alone in your challenging seasons. Yep. We're here if you want to reach out for some support. All you have to do is click the link in the show notes and schedule a time that mm -hmm. works best We'd for you. We'd love to connect with you. We'd love to do that. And we encourage you to continue to be intentional about learning everything you can around step family complexities and your own unique dynamics. Mm -hmm. We want you to stay focused on that imperfect progress that Kim just talked about. And, and that will help you lead your family forward. Yes. And if we, we can, can make, make it, it, so can, can you. you. That's right. Okay. That was a little cheesy and rehearsed, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. All right. Well, thanks for talking to me, honey, about this. This mm -hmm. was a great, uh, a great episode. This was really fun. Happy yeah. 100th episode. Yay. That's a good thing to celebrate. <laughs> well, that's going to make this 100th episode a wrap. Until next time. Until next time.